curious in the in the work that you have done whether there are two or three issues where you would say the UN has been particularly effective. That is specific environmental issues. Um, we all know the frustrations with climate change, its incredible complexity, the difficulty of moving states and people and so on to change behavior. But would you would you are there two or three spe other specific issues? Are you think there's been particular effort successfully? Uh, made through the UN? Well, there is one issue that where the United Nations and especially UNEP have been particularly effective in resolving and what that is the global issue of the ozone hole. And this is, honestly, this is the only global problem that we have resolved uh, collectively by using the science, the institutions, and the individuals. So it's, it's the perfect example of how one could use all of the instruments at uh, our disposal within the United Nations. And it's, it's a great, it's, it's a fabulous story of leadership, both from governments, the United States really pushed mm -hmm. for the creation of the Montreal Protocol and for imposing very stringent limits, Within the United Nations, Mustafa Toba was the executive director of UNEP at the time in, uh, in the 80s when, when the ozone issue came to, to the agenda. And he said, I am not going to shrink back and give this to the governments. I have an obligation as a scientist and as a civil servant to advocate and to resolve environmental problems. And he did so. To, to the chagrin of some governments at the time, and yet he managed to bring them together and bring about the resolution of a true global environmental problem, which is the depletion of the ozone layer. So that's, that's one uh, excellent example. And the, the book by Richard Benedict, who was the um, ambassador, the negotiator of the United States is a fantastic book. Uh, mm -hmm telling the story of the negotiations of how, how it all came to be. Uh, another issue that we are currently working through, but that UNEP also has put on the agenda is the issue of, uh, of chemicals and waste. And uh, through the work of, of UNEP, we have created a number of international conventions, the Basel Convention on the Movement of Hazardous Waste, across boundaries, the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants that regulates uh, pesticides, mm -hmm. and uh, now the Minamata Convention on, uh, on Mercury, which is the most recent convention on, on chemicals. And uh, currently, we are in the process of arguing for and perhaps creating a convention on plastics. But there is a real groundswell uh, around the world um, against the use of single-use plastics and of thinking about how we could better um, manage the plastic production, the use of plastics, and the disposal. So that is to be seen. That, that story is to be written. And uh, as you know, we have dissertations in our department on, on these issues. So we'll, we'll be looking to, to see the results. Indeed, indeed. And I, I would just add that in terms of the ozone, uh, you mentioned the three conventions for chemical waste, but there are now what, nine protocols uh, relating to ozone. It's an ongoing effort to, to address uh, the issue and, and to refine the responses to it uh, based on the science, sci as science evolves. Uh, Indeed, and yes. we are now using those instruments to actually address climate issues, and that is the yes. Kigali Amendment mm -hmm. of using the successful Montreal Protocol and uh, the, the platforms and the instruments that we have for ozone to regulate um, greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm.